time is uh, 6 p.m. Um, we're meeting at the main meeting room in the municipal offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Uh, remote meeting connection. Uh, this is broadcast on Franklin uh, Frontier Community Access Television, FCAT. The dial-in number is 206-331-4836. The, uh, enter the attendee pin of 142-217-321 and then the pound sign. Call-in participant should dial in then enter the PIN when prompted. The public is encouraged to log in using computers or smartphones for full function participation. Please this, use this URL to log into the webinar, uh, https uh, colon forward slash forward slash webinar dot any meeting dot com forward slash one four two two one seven three two one. Meeting attendees should mute phones, which if you're on your phone, that would be star six for landlines, unless asking a question or commenting. All attendees should wait to speak until for other participants are finished. And if you're muting your phone, you would use star six. And if you want to unmute to speak, you would also hit star six again. That would unmute, unmute you. So I'll call this meeting to order. This is our first kind of full meeting, I guess, after, after town elections. So I get the pleasure of stepping down his chair, <laughs> making a nomination for a new chair. Um, so we need to reorganize our board. So um, the first step, I would make a motion to um, elect Carolyn Ness, our chair for the year. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank Any you. further discussions? You want to run now? <laughs> Why don't you finish the meeting? That would be You great. want me to finish the meeting? Yeah. Okay, I'll do the meeting. And so at the okay. end of the, let's make a, a motion. So at the end of this meeting, Carolyn Ness will uh, assume chair of the Board of Selectmen and Board of Health. Thank you, Trevor. Welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, all those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good to be under your leadership again. So, uh, um, thank you for putting in a wonderful year. Oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, it's been, this has been really hard. It's, it's been a lot of work. It's been a lot of work, no doubt about that. But uh, I've learned a ton. And sometimes we wonder I, if the chair should be getting condolences instead. I know. <laughs> instead of That's why I'm not in a rush. <laughs> um, I, I, I was just hoping um, maybe for our next meeting we can divvy up. Um, I make sure that we reorganize in the sense of who's a point person on what projects. And, sure. Because um, there's so much stuff. There is. It's a lot. And I, I have to say, um, you know, I start out early in the morning and it's late at night sometimes. And, I know. You're on the phone You know, a lot. now the Tons mosquitoes and the ticks are picking up. And yep. Yep. As well as this COVID thing and the reopening. It's, it's, it's really hard to stay on top of everything. I mean, yeah. it's like... It takes a team for sure yeah so um, I, I feel like we work really well together and it, yep. and I but I just think if we organize who is in the point person to work with Casey on mm -hmm. things nothing will get dropped sure I I'm, that's the big thing that I always worry about is mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. know we drop things so sure okay one thing I would um, wouldn't mind a vote on is um, signing the warrants um, I, so I'm happy to continue doing that if people want, or you're happy to take it over. No, but that I still would be great. To if, them and I, yes. I learn a lot from that, so I like reviewing them, and anybody's willing to, obviously, at any time. But. If, if you want to continue to do that, that means, because you're in here a lot, mm -hmm. so that means that it would be regularly signed for, um, the because it's an payroll. off meeting, right, yep. for the payroll. So if you can do that, that would be really okay. great. Is, is and then Dave okay and I, I mean, you're welcome to look at them anytime. Yeah, I then just, Dave and I can just look at them anytime. Yeah, yeah, anytime. But we're not like have to be here. So I Wednesday make, morning to be signed for the week. Okay, so I make a motion just to have that vote so that 
Barb knows and everyone knows that that would still be happening. The other two members still can sign. Of course, sign them anytime. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and oh, just review them anytime. Yeah. Or, yeah, just that. Yeah. Um, it, it's just a, it's nice because it's an off week. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that way it's done and it doesn't hold up anybody. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, but, and if you can't make it, Dave sometimes of swings course. by a lot. Yes, so exactly. That exactly. would be really good. So I'll make that motion that we continue with one, um, sign, sign one select board member signing the warrant is sufficient. Okay. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Trevor McDaniel. Great. Dave Wolfram. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Good. Okay. So, um, our first, um, Scheduled hearing is uh, Zach Smith, um, this uh, South County EMS director, talking about the retirement group change. And Zach was before us um, a while back before COVID kind of hit. And this is something he's been working on for a while, actually. I remember, I think when I was on the SCEMS board, he was still working on this. So, um, Zach, are you, are you available? Yeah, I am available. Um, I'll, I'll touch base. Uh, real quick, this is, um, you mentioned we've been working on it for a while. Uh, I think the letter from the Board of Oversight, the SCEM Board of Oversight to the Deerfield Select Board is dated March 19th, and that reflected their vote yep. to have Deerfield move uh, from Group 2 to Group 4, all the EMTs. This is uh, from the Franklin County Retirement Board, Dale Kowicki, the executive director there. Um, the short and the long of it is, two reasons why we should vote this. One is just the recognition that the EMS providers obviously are members of public safety. Um, I think that's no more clear now having dealt with COVID um, than ever before. The other issue is though right now we're in group two, uh, if and when one of us retires, uh, it's likely or almost certain that the board will give us retroactive group four which means that we will have been underfunding the system the entire time. So in the spirit of the Board of Oversight, South County EMS, three towns being totally transparent on all the expenses, um, by voting us into Group 4 now, it allows us to capture those real and actual costs and pay into the system appropriately moving forward. Can I ask a question on that? So right now, yeah. uh, certain employees, do they pay in a certain percentage as if they're in Group 2 and then and then the employee would pay, uh, the employee would then, if they were in group, group four, be paying a little bit more just to make sure they're covered when they retire? Is that the idea? Or is it, is it um, a town thing? Or, or is it combined, like, town pays a certain amount, the, the um, employee pays also a certain amount? I'm just not sure the mechanics. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, basically the difference between group you two are and no group longer four a presenter. is the rate at which... The meeting is in listen-only mode, and only meeting presenters can be heard. Your line is muted. There are four members in this conference. The retirement side, they have to pay your retirement for, you know, three more years, four more years. And to cover that cost, yes, what would happen is um, the assessments to the entire retirement system would have to go up small if we do it today just to cover those expenses 15 years down the line, 20 years down the line. Um, there's a component that the town pays, um, and then there are contributions that the individual makes. Um, but the way the retirement system works is everybody pays into the big pot of the entire retirement system, and then it is basically assessed to the, um, I forget how many towns you said are in the system, um, 38 participating agencies. They're all assessed a percentage based on kind of their ratio of staff salaries compared to the overall obligation. So, yeah, if, if we do it now, um, we would all pay a little bit more into the system to cover those expenses a couple decades down the line. If we don't do this, then when those people do retire and they're granted Group 4, the system won't have been funded for those many years, and mm -hmm. so the difference would have to be made up by the town at the time of retirement. Well, so I, no, I, I, uh, so I agree with that, and I agree with you know all, all the reason to do this. I always just look at the financial impact, and um, and I think about um, OPEP, and because they're all Deerfield employees, um, Deerfield is is kind of really the one on the hook to pay for that. Now I know that 
uh, SCEMS has started doing the 4% that Deerfield You are now doing. a presenter. Oh, oh, oh. Hello? Can there you, are four Can you hear me at all? Conference. Are you there? Can you say that again, Zach? Right. I think we lost. So, we lost connection. Yeah, at some point you got us on mute. So, oh, no. Okay. So can you, uh, I heard all that. I heard all of your explanation. I think everyone else did. Um, but did you hear my reply at all yet? No. Okay. I, I did not hear your reply, okay. no. So my reply is um, I agree with all the reasons why to move to group four. Um, you know, I, I do believe it's warranted and the work that you do justifies that. Um, I always worry about um, you know, the finances of it all and down the road. And I know that um, SCEMS is paying in the 4% of what we typically pay um, into retirement. That is not enough. <laughs> you know, it's not enough for our, us in Deerfield too. I mean, it's not just a SCEMS issue. It's, um, it's all of us. We're woefully underfunding that. So I just worry about just like this where we're not if we don't move you to group four now, we haven't saved up enough. We also haven't saved up enough in OPEC to cover those, you know, extra 10 years that you could retire, that, that, that a person could retire. And we have that extra cost for those many more years because a person in group four can retire earlier than a group group two. So you have those extra years that you need to spend. Yeah, that's all, that's money. only five years. Five years, okay. I've been told it's five years. So those, um, those years i just think i just think it's smart to do what you're talking about move to people people to four so that you're spending that extra money and saving up ahead of time for when you retire and the board grants you a four even though you weren't um and we should have money we we should really look as a town and as a board of oversight look at you know making sure you know looking at the actuarials and really studying this a little further and making sure that we are funding that that OPEB enough to cover. And, and, the, and the main reason is that it's three towns that need to pay into it, because it's really three towns that are funding this thing. Um, and Deerfield needs to do more too. I'm not sure what the other towns do for OPEB. The other, the other towns do more than we do. Yeah, so we should, you know, we need to step up and do that. So it might be something we need to look at in future budgets, you know, as we go along here to just make sure that we're covering that extra cost that we will have for, for the OPEP. And, and smartly, moving it to four now will allow you to do that in the future, too. Um, I, I, I don't know how we, ha we, we wrestled with this earlier. This is obviously pre-COVID. Right. We were discussing this. Mm -hmm. And we were back and forth. And one of the, uh, you, as Deerfield employees, they pay into the OPEB account, but you can't have one group pay a different, from my understanding, when we talk to the accounting, you can't have one group pay a different rate than another group. SCEMS versus our the, employees, right. They are our employees and right. just because SCEMS. So we've got to sort this out. Long term. Uh, long term. So right. okay. I don't know what would be the more ad adequate I mean, it's still 50% ours in the sense that we own it. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're not really talking about a huge amount of money, but over time, over 10 right. or 20 years, it should be sorted out. So, um, because it would be significant when people go to retire. Exactly. I mean, we have a younger group, so it's not anything particular at the moment. Right. But I think we should vote this, and, the, and this has to stay on the radar as to address that OPEB. somehow we need to address it. And we know we're not funding OPEB. Correct. And this is not a year to go in and let's fund right. OPEB 100%. No, I mean, we, we potentially yeah. are going to have huge stress in, in 2022, so mm -hmm. fiscal 22. So we can't fix it this year but we can't lose sight that we have we, to do it. We so, can still, right, start educating So I, I would recommend us voting for this mm -hmm. and then have Casey put it on some tickler that we've got to sort it out with MMA, the lawyers. And the actual because our whole, should be coming up this, our whole, this year. Um, yeah, well, our SCEMS is a unique um, setup in, in um, I mean, that's how we got money to fund putting it together and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So it is rather unique. So what we need to do is whether we get legislative relief 
through Natalie and Joe mm -hmm. to fix, you know, get a waiver to do that or something. We'll figure it out, but we can't lose it. So Casey right. needs to put it on some kind of tickler. Did you hear that, Casey? Casey, did you hear that? <laughs> I, think she did. I did. Yeah. Okay. okay good. So if you could put this on a tickler to-do list to sort out with the state and how it needs to be done legally, I'd really appreciate it. Because we're going to have to do some so re research. Can you, can you reframe what yes. you want me to do? Yes. I'm trying to figure that out. I'll help. So um, I think this year our actuarials are up for OPEB. I, I, I'm almost positive. We could check with, um, yeah. with Barb. But I'd love to have them come back in and do another presentation on that. Um, I, I think it can't hurt to have as many of those presentations throughout the years as we can just to really drive home the point that we are way underfunding the liability coming down the road and, and you know and, and maybe we steer some other revenue that's coming into town once marijuana comes or other things like that but we need to look at ways that we could start making a dent at the OPEB and this is just you know, this I mean is this is some... one issue of it it's right. not really it's this a school yeah, this schools. isn't Skem's problem this is just a, it's a town problem but this just brought to light that we really need to jump on this um, to make sure that we're covering that down the road. Okay. So that's all. Okay, so I make a motion that we support moving um, the retirement group from group two to group four for SCEMS. I'll second that motion. Uh, Any further discussion? Uh, no, I agree. Um, I don't know if there's a group four plus, so some some of our folks can buy Rogaine, but you know. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> People hang on for a long time yeah. doing that job, so, you were saying. So, yeah, okay. I fully support it. Um, you know, we've got a very dedicated group of people. And mm -hmm. and I, th I think the pandemic does show that they are definitely frontline people. Oh, yes. I, I mean, mean they, the, the traumas that they deal with and carry for the lifetime is yep. obvious. Yeah. Um, uh, no, you know, I, I responding to car that. accidents and stuff. It's, you know, it's... It's traumatic. It is. No it's devastating. That. So. Yep. I mean, and it's also very physical. So mm -hmm. if people are getting older and they need to retire, they should be able to retire. So because uh, all we're doing then is, is making it, um, you know, a workers' comp claim potentially. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I feel like this is a good solution and people will continue to work because they usually are pretty dedicated they and they love, love it. Yeah. So if they can work, they will work, um, especially if they're at the high end of the pay mm -hmm. scale. So. I'm, I'm not really concerned that this will impact us that much, but I do, it does send a message that we do appreciate our EMS. Mm -hmm. So all those in favor? Dave Wolf from I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Thank you, Zach. Thank you very much. Have a good night. You too. You too. Thanks, Zach. Um, so select board reports and announcements is is next is anybody do, do you want to hit on anything um i just uh, oh no go well, ahead i just wanted to mention that you know we had a really nice ceremony uh, it wasn't a select board thing or a town-led thing at all but it i attended the um the black lives matter that vigil really on nice. saturday it was a beautiful day um but it was so nice to see so many people come out in the community and um and show support and stand stand with people uh, persons of color and um you know, try to bring light to this issue. So I know, you know, Chief has been talking with a lot of people and been very proactive on the issue. So I thank, thank him and all, all the department for, um, for doing a great job every day out there for us. And uh, certainly there's more to learn and more to discuss in the future. But, um, but that, that was a good, that was a really good vigil. Um, I, I just want to say, I, I, it, it's really wonderful to work with you all because I, I feel like we do really care and it is important to us and mm -hmm. it is an, a priority for us as a group. So yeah. um, I think that conveys itself down to everybody else mm -hmm. too. So thank you, Trevor, and thank, thank you, you, Dave. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what else we've been working on. We, uh, just to talk about the MVP stuff, I know we'll get into that a little bit later, but um, I'm not sure if you're all aware, but we decided to hold off on the sewer part of that project, talking with Dave and 
and Chris Curtis, um, it was important that we didn't jeopardize this round. It was more of my ignorance on how the project works and how how many jobs, you, how many projects you can go after <laughs> at one time. <laughs> it's okay. We We're going to work guess, on it so. next to the next round. Yeah. So that and that's for for kind of and and it really it, it what what it did kind of bring to light is that you know. The $19 million that we had asked for was for phase one and phase two of the project. There's really a phase three, which really has to do with the, um, the effluent pipe going out and, and you know resiliency. If we want to do more to that plant to make it more resilient, that was not really included in the original bid. We're just looking at changing the aeration over and you know getting rid of chlorine and that kind of thing and putting in a, another clarifier, different things like that. But there's, you know, the, there's a request for that taking um, septage from haulers, you know, and that's something to look at. So there's, an, uh, there's other projects that we need to look at. And, and I think the pipe going out to the river that's undersized now, um, 24 inch comes into the plant, 12 inch goes out to the river. That pipe's been there since the early 70s and is in bad shape under, underwater. So it really should get, um, you know, brought up, up to code as well. And, looking at the resiliency, I think that kind of, we can roll that into phase three and hopefully apply for a, for a grant for, for a lot of that. I, I, I feel like we should um, be able to raise the bank mm -hmm. when we do that pipe. Yeah. So we can raise the bank and yep. we can raise, and then we can replace the pipe yep. and then we can raise the tank side. So it would be actually much more of a project, but having the engineering done for the tanks, mm -hmm. you know, having them worked on it. I know it's not completely done, but it was the majority of it was done. And um, that's going to be great because what happens is we're thinking because of COVID, there's not going to be another round till next spring. But actually, that's maybe not true. If mm -hmm. there's something going on, the governor just, you know, puts the money out. So we need to be ready. Yeah, no, I agree. And, and yeah. so we're going to start working on that for... The next round, mm -hmm. whenever it comes. Yes. Um, so, uh, but I think we could do actually more if we focus on that. We added it to our plan. I think we can do more than what we were and fully intended to do initially. And I, I think that's more important. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. I just think. Yeah. I just wanted to make make it aware that like that all of that stuff isn't included in the first round that we were talking about. We still have. The old Deerfield project that you know we're getting oh, underway no. with pretty quick on looking at engineering and what what we need to do there and what choices we have. So it's a lot lot of stuff still down the road on that. A little bit of a moving target, but um, but even with the discharge pipe, Dave Prickett should understand that there was a reason that was a 12-inch pipe and not a 24-inch pipe because you have to have a certain amount of retention. Uh, it should have been an 18-inch pipe instead of 12. Mm. Now, why it went with the 12, I don't know, but uh, you always have to have it a little undersized from what's coming in. That way you make sure you're holding back material well, and it doesn't empty too quickly. That's what I thought, too. Um, and, and from what Keith said, he said there's no – whatever comes into the plant for flow goes right out. I thought it would be more of like, okay, let's hold it and treat it. He said, no, it flushes straight on through. There's no stopping it. Well, there is stop because you have a 24-inch pipe coming in and 12. Well, yes. Yeah. So you're, there's, right. you you're, slow, a... you're slowing it down. Yeah. The uh, yeah, if, it, if it was too big on the discharge, you wouldn't have any retention at all, and the chances are that we'd probably be in violation of some mm. of it going into the river. Mm. Yeah. So we'll have to look at that for sure. Um, yeah, I'd like to look at that because I think David, uh, I don't remember very much, but I. Uh, that does ring a, a, a bell on. Yeah, they said uh, straight on yeah. through, but that may, it makes sense. But uh, yeah, know. we'll have to get an answer on that for sure. Oh God, um, more more work, <laughs> more <laughs> meetings. <laughs> yep. Um, and then we are uh, just with the other MVP stuff. You know, we're looking at the um, Leary lot. Uh, for development and uh, into a parking lot slash park kind of place. Um, so that is moving along. We Did we meeting. have any interest with um, any businesses that wanted to go for that governor's sidewalk improvement? I don't know, but I would love to discuss that and lay that out today to the public and our businesses. Um, okay, because you know, I, I think, think we could have Dick. I don't know if anybody knows completely about that, but what I have heard from people is, so the governor 
because restaurants need to kind of set up outdoor dining um, to get open, um, he, there were small grants available to towns and I think businesses mainly to um, yeah. help improve their frontage. So if there was an area that they needed some improvement for safety or um, what have you to set up, you know, seating outside, there was some grant money available from the state to do that. And we would really love to support our businesses in that venture. Um, you know, th there's been talk like why not from, you know, I don't know, four, four or five, six o'clock or something to 10, shut down several parking spots so that say, you know, Wolfie's is fine, they have a big parking lot. They can set up outside, but you've, you've got Holiday Pizza or many of the other businesses, Bueno Asano or Johnny Figs who have no place. So if we kind of blocked off some parking, they could set up cables out there secured. But, you know, these are all things you'd have to talk to the police chief about and building inspector. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot, a lot to talk about. But I think that if we could make some little outdoor seating spots to, for our businesses, I'll, I'll, I'm I'll all call, for that. I'll call Dick and see yeah. if he's um, had anybody that had interest on, because he's been working with everybody to reopen right so, so let's um, talk i'll see yeah talk with him about that and, and chief about security and yep. you know there was all kinds of ideas like hey let's shut down the downtown to cars and let everybody have a you know friday night or saturday night dinner that'd be pretty cool so there, there's some neat stuff you could do the yeah, grants because, are for more you know, permanent kind of can, you know make sure we're utilizing the leary lot more yes you know, with crosswalks coming from the Leary lot to Elm Street. Yes. And that way, you know, you park there, you walk there. We could almost close down those parking spots and just put in yes. a green area or whatever yep. there and that the, those businesses could use. Absolutely. Let, and just make that center of town so much better. So the, yeah. the, we had a meeting, I don't know if it was yesterday. I think it might have been yesterday. Yep. Yes. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so with, uh, with Ty and Bond, um, about about they're finishing up the engineer and we didn't have a ton of time because of the MVP grant schedule to really get into huge in-depth conversations with the businesses like leader and BBC but so really the engineering that's laid out is kind of redeveloping the parking lot from Main Street three quarters of the way in and then just kind of terminating it to leave it open for a discussion with a beer garden or parking or a shared driveway out to Elm with Leary uh, with the leader lot leader people so it leaves it open for stuff there but at least got us a good section and what it would be is like you'd come in you'd have some handicap parking on the left some EV chargers then you would have um, a pocket park so the size of maybe five parking lots parking spots um, and with a kind of a cross pathway out to the Elm Street so you could have some picnic tables there, some trees, that kind of thing. And then um, we looked at adding a duplicate to the other side. So when people come in, there's, a, there's an automatic restriction of traffic. It's not like zipping through. You slow down, you go between these two parks, and then it opens up to more parking all the way through. Um, so they were gonna redo the engineering of that, the design a little bit. Kevin was on the call, Casey and I, um, Chris Curtis was on. And we, um, we kind of came up with those ideas. So he's revising that plan and gonna get it back to us because they need to submit that pretty quick. Um, it's gonna be done by the end of the month. So, so that's exciting to see that done because then you could, you'd have some yeah. spacing, you could, you could open up these places. I love the idea of the pocket parks. That's how nice. people, I mean, people, Grab I've it. heard nothing but positive things when they do those pocket yeah. parks, yeah. you know, and people really appreciate it because it's all of a sudden it's just this really nice area in the middle we'll of asphalt. Sit and eat dinner and yeah. whatever. Yeah, grab yeah. some lunch and, and sit out. So I'm excited about that work. And then I, we did talk to them about getting moving on the complete street sidewalk work in front of there. At, and then we have some money for the common engineering. So I want to get that rolling. So it's kind of a holistic view of all of that. So it's taken a long time, but it's getting there. Um, so that's really all I've got to talk about for that. Do you have any COVID updates? Um, uh, well, Casey, do you want to talk about uh, how, how much money are, do we have left from our original um, CARES amount? 
or how much have we spent? Do you have an idea? I don't have a um, budget report for that. I, I did put the grant application in. They have a couple questions for us. I want to touch base with uh, Brenda before I write them back. Okay. Um, because like we were, not every town applied for the full amount. And the full amount, if you apply for it in 2020, you don't get the 2021 allocation. So the full amount is $444,542. So they have a couple questions. I just want to run them by John and Brenda before I respond back to them. Okay. Okay. Because um, we're going to need, um, I ha we're putting together the supply list for a flu clinic and, um, and the COVID clinic you know drive throughs and we're going to have to have PPE for you know b both events for sure right. so we, we don't even really know how the COVID vaccine is going to be distributed but certainly the flu vaccine we are familiar with that and so that needs you know we we can do a rough estimate and then I was just going to double or triple it for you know a COVID um, mm -hmm. drive through, but we, we've got to have PPE for our volunteers. Most of our volunteers are older and, um, you know, so we're going to do some training. Zach has volunteered to, um, and Lori and Dick have volunteered to put together training that hopefully town employees, um, you know, our volunteers and the schools, everybody can just have a update on how to wear PPE and then how to, um, uh, you know, take it off because it's really important that you take it off carefully. And um, so anyway, uh, we, you know, we have a lot of stuff going on and the reopening, everything is changing. But um, the most important thing that everyone just has to remember is to wear your mask. It's not, it's not even, you know, keep washing your hands and wipe down surfaces, but that's not really even such a big deal. It's wearing the mask. And, um, and that's what's going to keep, it is circulating, but we've been very fortunate. It's not really circulating wildly at all here. And um, I mean, we're going to see down south as people go inside from the heat with air conditioning that it is really spreading down south. And it's because people aren't wearing masks and they're not really social distancing. So right. we as a community have done really, really well. Very proud of the and, community. And I am really proud and we just need to keep people convinced that this does work and we it, no one loves these i hate these yeah but we've got to wear them and it's just too bad because it's the only way we're going to stay healthy mm -hmm. and also we're not really sure you know there's so much discussion on this vaccine that it could be have to be a yearly vaccine for a while until there's real herd um, immunity so we could be doing this for quite a while and then we could be doing you know annual um, dispensing site drills just to get this out to the community so there is a lot of discussion on this we're trying to keep up on the information it changes daily information from the state changes daily so we really appreciate the community being so patient mm -hmm. as things change and are so fluid and uh, as, so your, as your social distancing and walking in the woods ticks are really bad so please <laughs> <laughs> Please be careful. Um, you know, we're, we're starting to hear illnesses in town of, of you know, yep. tick-borne illnesses, um, reports of that, um, you know, lab-tested reports. So it's very, um, very concerning because they're, they can knock you right off your feet. Um, it, you think you're strong and it's a small bug, but when it gets into your nervous system and your, you know, your brain and you get swelling from them, it, they're deadly. Um, so please um, check yourself where the pernethrin, I think it is. Um, Methrin, yeah. Pernethrin, uh, or spray pernethrin, your shoes, um, you know, please, you know, just keep an eye out, do tick checks, check the dog, check you, um, check your kids. Really? Um, I just can't yeah, say that enough. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, make sure you check your dogs and, um, you know, because, they, they, it, of you. yeah, they hop off the dog and then they, you, you know, they're waiting to jump on you. And um, it, it really, the, we have, still have subsidized tick testing, so we know what's going on in the community. But Trevor's right. We're having problems already with people reporting illnesses. So please, please, please check yourself with ticks all the time. 
the mosquito mosquitoes are already being trapped this week. This is our first week of trapping. Um, we're really, the idea is to keep an, an eye on our perturbin um, population. That's the main disease-carrying mm -hmm. mosquito. So um, it usually doesn't, nothing West Nile disease does not usually show up for another couple weeks. And it's uh, it's been the dry, first week. Which has been good. It's the first week of July, and it's been July, um, dry. So who knows? Maybe we'll squeeze out another couple weeks. Mm -hmm. So That'd be good. I'll, we'll keep you updated on any reports that come in. Okay. Um, so moving along, uh, our first um, discussion items is uh, the tree box and rain garden bid award um, approval of notice to proceed. So I'm not sure. Trevor. Yes. Chris is on. Oh, great. Hi, Chris. How are Hi, you? Trevor. How are you? You feeling any better? I'm okay. Good. 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 Uh, just a little bit. Good. Um, Thank you. One day at a time. Uh, so I, um, so I, I've been reading over over the the bid a bit. Um, I'm a little concerned. So do you, do you want to give a quick rundown, or do you want me to ask my questions, or what are your thoughts? Uh, well, why don't you ask your question? Okay. So first, and then I, I have a um, I have a suggested um, solution to the problem of uh, how do we achieve uh, both the Kelleher her Drive project and the green infrastructure construction um, in this grant cycle um, okay. that I can talk about. Okay, that'd be great. So one was just the, the overall cost that came back on them. Um, and then I don't know if this is a big deal, when, but when EBI did the did the bid? Um, they have a lot of mis you know, not a lot. They have misinformation in there about the location of the town and that it needs to be done by August 13th, you know, 2013. There's, you know, just they have like Quincy and some different roads in there. I don't know if that's a real big deal. I know that everybody kind of does templates, right? They have a template of a job and they copy and paste it in. I'm just hoping that the bids that came in kind of picked up on all that and they know they're working in Deerfield and not Quincy? Yeah, I, I certainly think so from, okay. from what I understand. Yeah, just it's under like the um, location of work as you'll see that it's all under yeah, all under Quincy. But um, I just wanted to make sure that that was not going to cause us an issue. Um, and then I guess maybe I'd, I'd hear about your thoughts about the cost and how we might be able to, you know, to deal with this. Okay. Um, well, to kind of summarize, the, the bids that came in for the green infrastructure were higher than expected, and the low bidder, if we include all of the project, which includes Alternative 1, the low bidder is about $104,000 higher than our MVP contract amount of $200,000. Um, interestingly enough, the bids for Kelleher Drive construction came in low, um, even if we do the additional work that we talked about with the form liners for the stone uh, facing, yep. um, the, the overall cost of that comes in at about $104,000 lower than the <laughs> MVP contract amount of $385,000. So it's interesting that you know the, the numbers kind of match up. Um, but we wanted to try to figure out a way to get both projects done in their entirety, but at the same time not have any risk of, of a problem with the Kelleher Drive um, project, uh, which uh, the engineers feel they need to have a contingency on hand for during yeah. the construction period. So what I have proposed to, uh, to Casey and then to the state environmental affairs uh, project manager is that we transfer some funds, um, but we do it in, in sort of two stages. Um, the first transfer would be taking $37,000 from the Kelleher Drive project uh, budget and moving it over to green infrastructure so we can, we can award the contract to the low bidder and enable them to do the first phase of the project, which would be six tree box filters and two rain gardens. Um, the second phase of that green infrastructure project 
would probably have to be put on hold, which is a $67,000 amount for two additional tree box filters. But I'm suggesting that we put that on hold until the Kelleher Drive project is done in its entirety, mm -hmm. and then um, do a cha change order to the contract and add the two additional tree box filters in um, after we're sure that the Kelleher Drive project is, is going to be okay and, and not need that additional contingency. Yeah. Do you, do you um, um, recall where those additional two were going to go that we're going to hold on? Uh, I don't remember. No, I, I, I don't have that right in front of me, okay. but I, um, I think we probably have the flexibility because I think they're all the same price. Right. Um, I think we have the flexibility to decide which six we wanted to go forward with. Okay. Um, okay. And, uh, you know, we could prioritize those. I think even if we end up doing sure the last two tree box street. filters next yeah, spring, you know, we still, because of the extension that we got, we'd still be okay in doing that. Okay. Um, Time Bond thinks that, that Kelleher Drive will probably be done by um, most likely the end of September. Um, so we might be able to even squeeze it in during this, this fall. Okay. Um. Now I have to get state approval for for that transfer, right. but um, that would, if, if they do approve that, that would enable us potentially to do both projects in their entirety um, in, in the best case scenario. Okay. Um, so how would we, um, how should we go forward then? Would we want to wait until we got that approval or what, what do you think? Um, well, I was thinking um, in order to keep things rolling, and I know you guys don't have a lot of meetings during the summer, um, is to, uh, I've suggested to Casey some language uh, to make a motion to approve the award of the bid um, to the low bidder for the um, green infrastructure project, contingent upon um, the final review of that bidder by the engineer and um, contingent also upon the approval of the transfer of the $37,000 in funds over from the Kelleher Drive project, which is a state decision. Yeah, yeah. So there's two, two contingencies, but it would enable um, the bid award to move forward if those two things are met. Okay. Anyone have any discussion items on that? Um, talk about it, anybody? No, because it does sound like we could get Kelleher Drive would wrap up before we really get committed to those last two. Right. And I don't know. I just don't want to get stuck. But we, if we have, if we can prioritize where we put those tree boxes, and we're doing it, you know, on the like South Main Street and, and you part know, of Elm, I think was yeah, known, because if that helps. Um, define the places for people outdoor eating and stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering uh -huh. if we could leverage this with um, that grant uh, that grant program so that you could do some of the, you know, fix up of the sidewalks and then have a tree box. Right. And we could get them to do the tree box as part of that grant right. instead of this grant. Yeah, well, we could look at that. I mean, you can't stick... You, the whole point was to have, you know, you're fixing up the sidewalk, so, you, you, you know, you got to stick people out there. you got to, you know, you're not going to put them, make it safe, but you're also, you know, a tree box is better than a, you know, concrete barrier. The potential is for shade or yes. whatever. Yes, exactly. No, I could see it tied together mm -hmm. really nicely if we could. I know, I know, me uh, too. So uh, I think it's worth investigating. And moving forward. Moving forward and then with, yeah. the, with the base bid, not the others will hold right. on that other. Right. And, and then uh, maybe we can do th at least two of the tree boxes over on Elm Street yeah. with, with that sidewalk money or something. Maybe. We could figure something out. We need to dig in on that. Okay. Uh, that's a short timeline, though. That's next week. For the grants? Though? Yeah. Oh. So we need to get on it in the next couple of days. But Do you, I, I, I feel like that is doable then. We'll talk to Dick tomorrow about finishing yeah, I, I, yeah, I'd like to that. talk to Dick and see if he can get somebody interested. Do you have any questions, Dave? No, it's, you know, I agree that, you know, a lot of this 
can be tied in with the improvement of downtown here. Um, yeah, I'm just nervous that, you know, make sure we don't increase the town's liability too much here. You know? Right. I know. It's, I, uh, so as long as it's contingent on securing the transfer of funds, right. I'm okay with it. Me too. Because it's not additional funds, and we've right. already it's, done the we're math. So. Expending additional money. So, right. So don't is now it's not the time to be spending more. No. Right. No, but I, 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 I'm just thinking, like, Johnny Figs and Holiday Pizza, those are... That would be too That'd ideal. Be and Wolfie's. Fantastic. I mean, Wolfie's yeah. is... Wolfie's is doing a thing out there. But, yeah, if we could, you I know, mean, talk you just, to Bueno Sano, all that area, you know. And right. like you said, if we can utilize in the meantime, even just park back in, you know, yeah. in the Leary lot for the summer. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. A lot moving along. So yeah. there's a lot of moving parts. So, okay. So entertain a motion to... I'll, I'll make the motion that um, we move forward with awarding the bid contingent on um, transferring some of the grant money from Kelleher Drive, that 37000 from Kelleher Drive, to um, this project, and then waiting on the last two to see how, you know, how we make out with the Kelleher Drive. If, there's, if it goes smoothly, if it continues to be dry, and we get you know nice-looking facade on the concrete, and we come under bid, then okay. But and and contingent to the engineer's review of the bids. And and contingent to the review of the bid, right? And this bid would be um, to Nunez Companies, uh, 658 Center Street, Ludlow, Mass, 01056, for the amount of $236,282 for the base bid. Yeah, the base bid, not the alternate. I'll second that motion. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Any questions? All those in favor? Dave aye. Wolfram, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Okay, well, thank you very much, Chris. Thank you, Chris. It's thank you all. It's exciting Appreciate that it. the MVP5 is going in. Any other, anything else, Chris, you wanna hit on while you got us? Or you, is that it for tonight? I, no, I think just the, the knowledge that tomorrow is our deadline to submit the MVP5 mm -hmm. grant, and hopefully that will be all set. I, um, yeah, I should be ready to go. Think yeah, that, Casey. Casey oh, put we, that in, I think. Oh, yeah, we got the last letter of support. He's putting it in. Oh, he's putting it in. Okay, yes. <laughs> At, as we speak. No, we got the in. last letter of support. Casey, Casey needs to finish one thing. We got an extra <laughs> letter that needs to be put into the grant. Chris and I talked about it earlier. Okay. I just need 10 minutes to put that in place and and have Chris review it quickly so tomorrow. I'll make a motion to give Casey 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 10 minutes. Thank you, Chris. I'm sorry it was Thank you late. Both. Yeah. I'm sorry that letter of support letter was Thank, late. Thank you all. Yep. Okay. Well, have a good night. Okay. Two. So, right. um, we have some Deborah, Can I ask a question? Of course. Um, I am sort of typing while I'm listening. Yep. Because I'm doing the background on the call. Jennifer had a prior commitment. Um, yep. I don't have a roll call vote on the nomination for Carolyn to the position of chair oh. as of the end of this meeting. Could you guys re-vote that just so I of have course. it? Of course. Sure. Sure. Oh. So I'll make a motion. I'll be happy to make this motion. i make a motion to um, uh, um, appoint um, Carolyn Ness, uh, the chair of the select board and board of health at the end of this meeting um for the following year dave wolf from second all those in favor dave wolf from i trevor mcdaniel i carolyn ness i and casey we also i don't know if you had caught that we also took a roll call vote for um allowing uh me one person or me to um sign the warrants Continuing to yes, sign the warrants? I, okay, you got that one? All right. So a motion to nominate Trevor McDaniel to continue to sign the warrant. In, in Carolyn made yeah. the motion and David seconded it, and I yes. have your roll call rolled in that one. Okay, I just great. didn't have the other one. Okay, sounds good. Great. And I didn't want to get to the end of the meeting and not have it. Okay, <laughs> me neither. Hmm. <laughs> I know. Okay, <laughs> good.
Okay. All I'll right. Set up now. So we have uh, some sewer abatements for uh, Mr. Wolfham, uh, Brown, and I'm going to mess this one up. Baranowski cleaners. Yeah. Beetle um, skewed Baranowski cleaners. Really skewed. Okay. So um, I have reviewed most of them. Um, so I'm going to just start with Baranowski, and I think um, that was a just a clear error, I think. Um, yeah. That uh, Sarah put this forward, and every once in a while we get an error in readings, and um, the bill was incorrectly put forward. So um, there's there's an they were overbilled, so there's an abatement of eight hundred and fifty three dollars and sixty eight cents um, request from the from Sarah to um, to make that abatement to fix the billing error. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'll make a motion to approve that. Um, I'll second that. Any further discussion on that? All those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, the next one is for um, American Elizabeth Brown. And I, um, I'm not sure I understand this request because they were um, asking for uh, an abatement because they filled the pool with water, but um, this is a winter bill. So typically yeah. the pools aren't filled in water, but even if they were, the um, summer bills are always abated at, you only pay 25% over and above your, whatever your winter read, previous winter reading is, because we know people are filling their pools and watering their gardens and washing their cars and all the stuff that they do in the summertime that just goes all over the lawn or down down the drain and not not in the uh, sewer system. So that's that's why we have an automatic abatement for everybody every year. Correct. Um, so Correct. I just wanted that's to. That's the way I understand it from my education yeah. that Sarah gave me yeah. and usually, a few days ago. And, and this reading, they usually read in October and then again in May, um, typically is, right. a, is about that time frame. And, and it differs every year because sometimes it's a little before and after. It all depends on when the uh, water department um, does it. They do it free of charge for the town and we use those readings, um, you know, to, to do our sewer, sewer charges. So, so what, from what I understand, the water reading date for this particular bill if they're requesting abatement yep. was on 41520. So that yep. would be the period from November 1st to that point. Yep. Um, I wouldn't think they'd be filling their pools in the cold, coldest spring since 1962, but that's just my thought. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Spoken out loud, sorry. But I think, no, I just think that the, just the, the whole issue is that we don't pay to pay, you know, do rebates for people filling their pool. We just, that's not how, you know. No, we just cap it. We just cap, cap. it at 25%. Right, you, are, you, you can, have an automatic system set up for that particular uh, period of reading is what I understand, correct. right, Trevor? Yeah, for, for the summer readings, not for the one that they're asking okay. for the abatement for. Because usually in the winter time, there is no washing the cars and that kind of stuff. So they, okay. Um, so we, we only do it in the summertime and it's 25%. You can only use 25% more than that. So, um, well, why don't we just um, table this until they, they or ask them to resubmit it or something? Yeah. This is, I, well, I don't. If they're if they're doing it for the winter readings, I don't think it would be applicable. Right. Yeah. So no, I, it's not. I, would, I, I maybe I'd they didn't understand. Not not to approve this abatement just based on the facts that are here. If there's other facts that I'm missing, yeah. Or if it's for a different time, um, or a different reason. Like a leak or something like that, or a, yeah, an error that makes sense. Um, the other one for Mr. Wolfram, um, uh, I don't know if I got enough info on this one. Not to be a, this I just is, have a received and updated information on Wolfram abatement. Another one recent most billing. So this was a request for an abatement for February twenty. 4th, 2020, and that was a request for 30,000, another for 50, and I think if I understand this right, there was a Great. construction going on next door that damaged the pipe. Yes. 
and found that, oh, maybe there is more info in here. Sorry, it was, it was not with the, the email. Let me look at this again. So the water usage. So I'm looking back at your history, and you're typically 35,000, 32,000, 32,000, 28,000. And then you had 63,000, and then another 82,000. Yeah. And that was where the leak was. The, yeah, the, one, the two. I know you asked for it last year, and we yeah. tabled it because yeah. we didn't really understand what was going on, and we thought it was it. an anomaly. And it wasn't until I started to have a fountain this spring that I knew the water line was broken. <laughs> okay. So they, and they've repaired that? Yes. Um, that was repaired in March, actually. Okay. So. Um, so what you're asking for is um, an abatement of Three hundred and seventy dollars, and then six hundred and seventeen dollars, right? Correct. Okay. And that was based on the break. Contractor next to my house broke the water line. Yeah. Servicing the oh, this was out to the barn. Okay. Um. Yeah. I when I put the gallons down, what I figured was I just use an average of thirty-three thousand gallons. Because that's typically where your average yeah, is. Yeah, about that. Yeah. And then just took the 33 from those existing numbers. That makes sense to me. Um. Okay. So do we have to vote these separately, Trevor? Yes. Okay. Well, I... Or do we just do it one, you know, together? Can you do an abatement do we, two years back, or not? No, this is well. This is an abatement for a read. Oh, it's just a reading back. Right. That's the only thing I need to check. Uh, on. So, can I make a clarification? Yes. Yeah. So the sewer, the first sewer abatement, um, dated February twenty fourth, was tabled for a, with a request for more information. Right. Um, and so I asked David for that information and we got it back and then it coincided with um, his second conversation with me about it. So I asked him to do the sewer abatement application for the second okay. billing if he was going to do that. Right. Because it, the clarification about the water break, the line break, yeah. see, from what he told me, it applied to both of them. So. That's why there's a confusion. It's actually both those abatement requests happened within the time frame that's required. Yeah. But the select board tabled the first one. Okay. Thank oh, you. okay. That's what I wanted to so know. I just then want to make I, sure we were I um, make a motion that we abate three hundred and seventy dollars and twenty cents from the winter reading, and six hundred and seventeen dollars from. No wait, that would be the summer reading. Summer reading, and six hundred and seventeen dollars from the winter reading. Because of the because of the break in the pipe that was repaired, and uh, using the average, you have it fixed. So you're not going to be looking for an abatement again, right? Right. We it's, hope it's fixed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we hope so too. Um, they okay. replaced the whole line from the main house to the garage. So. Oh, they did. Yeah. Okay, great. That's that's what I was looking to hear. Um, so I'll second that motion. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Dave Wolfram, abstain. Thank you. Two, one. Okay. Um, and that's a few of those three. Um, oh, um, the one thing that is not, I don't know if it's on this agenda or not at the moment. But I, I wanted to, um, do you mind if I, I, I discuss and take a vote on the, um, the bond anticipation notes, Casey? It's actually an item unanticipated at the end. Oh, it is. Okay, good, good. Yes. Oh, there it is. Yep, yep. 
I misunderstood Barbara's request because I didn't. She talked to you guys about it, and I was in the background doing yep. something last week at the meeting, trying yep. to clarify something. So I misunderstood that I should have put it on. So okay. when she advised me, I had them post a revised agenda as we're allowed to, as it, okay. for an item on anticipation, because right. I physically didn't hear it. Yep. So we'll get to that at the end then. That's perfect. Okay. Yep. Um, so uh, select board policies. Is that something that? I didn't have that. On I have there, a couple but... comments. Okay. So I've reviewed, I've gone through the bylaws a couple times in the past week, and I noticed that we don't have a code of conduct. And I did draft a policy. I sent it to town council for review. She's still looking at it. Um, but I think one of the things, because it isn't in the bylaws, and so this is one of those places where the select board steps up and provides guidance of the town's expectations for mm -hmm. employees Yep. and creates a framework for public contact when interacting with employees. So I think it would be a good thing to have. I agree. Um, elected officials are treated differently under the law, but employees and town appointees are considered, uh, town appointees, I mean, are considered special municipal employees. So they're actually required to follow the same conduct parameters that a regular full-time employee would. Right. No, so I, what I was suggesting, what I was thinking about in this, I, Kate hasn't been able to get back to me. She's, she's got another uh, issue she's dealing with right now. But if a new policy was created, it would need to be forwarded to the appointees and to the employees with a sign-off for each person recognizing that they've received it. Yep. Kind of like what we do when a person is newly appointed or newly yep. um, employed where you recognize, okay, you have the, the conflict of interest law and all sure. these other things you have to get back to it. Yeah, no, I agree. That, and that so um, I'm wondering if the select board this would consider um, allowing me to implement the code of conduct with input and coordination by town council so that we could expedite that outcome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, feel, I, mean, I feel comfortable and you'll about that. obviously get us a copy of it to look at. Yes. I would get you a final re the the review copy with comments from council, but I'd like to be able to implement it because it doesn't exist, and I think it would be a good time. It would be a good time to clarify yeah. that for everybody. It's fresh right after the election, we should definitely do that. Yep, appointments are coming, and <laughs> well, if nothing else, it clarifies it for yours truly as well. <laughs> there you go. Sounds good. Okay. It, it doesn't apply to me though, right? Right. Yeah. Nothing. It to does. Me. <laughs> you need to remember that that we you know we want to make sure that we're interacting as as um, nicely and and thoughtfully as possible. Okay, so we'll wait to see that from you. That sounds good. And this is going to be a policy, not a bylaw, right? Correct. No, it would be a policy because the bylaw doesn't frame it. Yeah. And so this is one of the things that I've noticed as as I came back on board, the bylaws don't frame out all of the in, all of the changes that have happened in human resources mm -hmm. in the past probably 30 years. Yeah. Some of it has been addressed and some hasn't. I mean, in the last five years, we'd ha we've had major changes and policies created on a federal and state level that aren't referred to. So at this point, and it's something I discussed with the personnel board on Monday, I really think we need to start looking at a different framework for HR background so that we have a flexible way to handle questions and interpretations that are based on information that isn't currently identified in the bylaws. They can be very limiting, and I'm not saying it's, a, it's the wrong thing to have a bylaw. It's just it doesn't touch on everything that we encounter yeah. on a regular basis as human resources managers. Policies are a lot easier and, and easier to adjust than a, than a bylaw anyways. Bylaws are a little clunky. They are more flexible. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. But in this case, a policy, any, for instance, if we were to draft a personnel manual, which has been discussed, mm -hmm. um, it would be something that both the personnel board and the select board would have some input on. Right. Because there's different perspectives. Yep. But for purposes of employee management, like I do, it makes it much more um, expedited because there are situations where we really need to move quickly on, on certain things. Yep. And so I gave a lot of information to the personnel board and asked them to start working on this. And I know it's been in the background with them. 
yep. before, but okay. we're actually, we want to start actually breaking it down to the nitty gritty. They have other things they have to do for snowboard. I mean, yep. but this is something that we really need to get moving because the interpretations out there in tort law, which is interpretation of state law based on lawsuits, that tort law interpretation is constantly changing and we want to catch up as much as we can. Yep. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Um, so the next item is some appointments and um, I know you wanted to kind of make most of them next week. I think you wanted yeah, to meet. Yeah, I, I was hoping that we could meet well, next this week. Is the first one here is just a clarification of the police yes, appointments. Exactly, yes, exactly. We, we voted, we did we vote. We did both of them, but I'll, I'll do it again just them, because but, well, I, if I anyone's think unclear. We did the first one and then I did the second one, but um, if there's any mis- I was a little unclear on it, so I just so don't want anybody to question let's, us. Let's clean it up then. This um, is all me. It's fine. Blame all right. me. All right. <laughs> no, Casey, there's we no blame. That. We did do both, though. <laughs> that we did, but that's yeah. okay. That well, we'll, the, the issue was that- um, I read the wrong list. Well, you read no? the list. The list was given to you, but unfortunately, the uh, Chad Risley was included in that first list. Oh, okay. And he's not being reappointed because of his uh, currently uh, with the Secret Service. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, I'm looking for that list now. Am I just making uh -oh. a motion? Oh, here, here, here. Oh, you've got it? Okay, yeah. we got it. So, um, so I'm going to make a motion to appoint. Um, the list as presented by uh, Chief John Pachurik, uh Jr. Um, for the 2020 um, fiscal year and 2021 fiscal year, sorry, 2021. Yeah, effective Seven, July 1st. Yeah, effective July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. This includes indefinite terms for full-time officers and um, the term of FY21 for, for special officers and part-time. So. That's my motion. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Yep. All those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great, thank you. The other uh, people we do want to, I just wanted to hit on a couple of these real quick. Sure. Because some people are coming in, um, like the, the uh, I was gonna do the weighers. Uh, oh they're yeah. they're coming to get sworn in and that needs to be done. The who? Um, the weighers? weighers. The weighers. You know, the people that sign off on the oh public ways, yeah, truck, truck yep. stuff. So, um, I would make a motion. Let me just make sure there's nothing on the other page. I think it starts here. Yeah, so I make a motion for the uh public wares for the FY21 fiscal year. Uh, Sean Babineau, Miles Downey, Corey Hamilton, Ryan uh, Pachalis, Ryan Price, Leo. Uh, Chichino, or Ch Chicoine, Chicoine, maybe? Robert Green, Todd Jarvis, and uh, Janine Savoy. Uh, I'll second that motion, Carolyn. Any further discussion? Oh, do I have a second? A uh, second from David? No, I second it. Oh, you second it. Yeah. I made the motion. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? I'm giving this up quick. <laughs> All those in favor? Dave Wolf from I. Thank you. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Okay. These are um, 6, 17, done. Uh, let's see. Uh, we should ask people if there anyone is interested in being on any committees. Yes. So. Um, we have the 350th committee that is really um, ramping up and is really exciting. So if anyone is interested in that. Um, what are some of the other vacancies we have? Um, let's see, we have, let me just look at this real quick. We do have a, a conservation commission that has a vacancy. Um, and do we, fence do we, viewers, do anybody we, want to be a fence viewer? Casey, did you have a, a chance to check and see if people are willing to serve again? Um, I think you're muted, Casey. We do have a uh, vacancy on the uh, Historical Commission. Casey, I think you're muted. 
I heard you talking in the background. You're right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gotten the, I did have a conversation with one person, but I don't know that everybody recognizes my request going out, so it might be useful if the board just yeah, kind of okay. we'll did what you're doing right now. The okay. swim program has a vacancy. All right. Uh, so, and then uh, the town memorial forest committee is all vacancies, so we need... Well, it's you, the was. selectman has been usually doing that, okay. but we haven't done anything. I, I was commission. trying to get somebody to, who was interested in being a forester to do, actually do something. You know, there is a vacancy I on don't the think swim. The town memorial forest exists any longer. Um, well, we ha I, I thought that was the one on, by Eagle Brook. Isn't that the one? Hmm. I don't know. There used I to know be one. I have a trivet. Um, there used Ed to be Kraft one on Stillwater. gave me this beautiful trivet. Hmm. Wood trivet that he made out of a tree from the Memorial Forest be before he died, and I um, and I promised him that we were going to do a forest management plan sometime. And I feel terrible that it hasn't done happened yet. I'd also um, I just wanted to reiterate the swim program in the Tri Town Beach has a vacancy from Deerfield, and um, I believe from Deerfield. So. Um, it would be, you know, th there's some decisions to be made on that park and what's happening there um, long term. So it might be worthy if anyone's interested in serving on that board and looking at the future of that board, you know, talking with Waitley, what are we going to do? I know the swim program's not happening this year, but what are we going to do long term with that space? And, you know, do we want to continue the program? Do we want to continue Tri Town? Do we want to make it into something different. So if anyone has any interest in recreation, especially outdoor recreation in that, in that space, it might be worthy of uh, a place to be and uh, a seat at the table to kind of have a say in what happens there. Um, and again, the historical committee and the conservation committee, I believe. So, and then we'll hit the rest of these next week when we meet. Yeah, we'll, we'll start. So did you want to meet on, what day did you want to meet? I know, Trevor, you wanted me to stay away from the 24th, correct? Uh, I think uh, we were going to meet the 23rd. Did you have the 23rd available, Dave? Okay. I think we were going to meet the 23rd, Casey. Oh, yeah, I couldn't do the 23rd. Okay. So the 23rd, yeah, I can do that. We just, just. All right, so I'll post for the 23rd. Okay. We may have a contract that I might want to add to that. Um, sure. It's related to one of the MVP programs, but what I would do is limit this agenda to um, appointments and perhaps contracts, okay. unless there's something that critical comes up. That that's sounds critical good. that comes up. No, that's it's good that's to good. it's good to just check in and get it done. Okay. Um, okay, so municipal aggregation this is a electrifying topic. I, it is. Uh, it is. I, I'm, it? I just want you to know that this is one thing that I am hoping that one of you would point. That Dave, I'm not really like trying to stare you down, but. <laughs> yes, she is. Um, they would can't you be see the me point? on the camera. I'm on the wrong angle. <laughs> <laughs> would you be the point person on this? Because I'm telling you, I'm confused. I still I can, am confused. Yeah, I can help with it a little bit. So why don't I, oh, yeah, why why don't don't I speak go ahead. to this first okay. so that the public knows what's going on? So. Deerfield, along with many other communities, have grouped together to buy green electricity. Electricity, the, you know, the electricity that comes to your house. So there's this, when you get your bill, there's the electricity that you purchase, and then there's the supply, the people who bring it to you. Um, so this has to do with the supply of electricity and, and what electricity it's made up of. You know, is it wind, solar, coal? oil, like who, who, all kinds of different ways you can make electricity, water. So, um, and electricity prices fluctuate quite a bit depending on winter and summer rates. Um, so the towns all got together. This is unbeknownst to me, but I found out about it recently. They've been working on it like Con, um, Five years Bob Armstrong and Conway's been, been working on this and a, and a proponent. And so we had hired a consultant um, the group did, a group of towns, municipalities, um, hired a consultant to go out and solicit bids from different energy producers um, to supply us with a couple of things. One was to supply us with a basic service, a rate for basic service, and then 
we wanted to have um, options. We had maybe five different options we could choose from in that, in that first initial purchase. And that was um, basic, you know, basic, right, you know, the amount of electricity and green electricity that, um, that is required by the state anyways. Um, so you had a basic charge, then you had different levels of green energy and they could be um, just wind, national wind, mostly made out of Texas and shipped up to us. Um, it could be, um, or, or it could be green from Massachusetts or New England. New England electricity is a little more expensive, but, um, but it creates jobs in our, in our area. So it makes um, renewable energy less expensive long-term because we invest in the jobs in the people here and the infrastructure here to bring energy, of, um, energy to us that is um, better for the environment. And so, so what Deerfield did was group into this aggregation and then we also chose two different price points. One is a basic price that everybody gets right off the bat. It's your basic charge. Um, right now it happens to be lower than what you're paying right now through Eversource, but that can always change. Um, and when you're, and when you're picking uh, an electricity price, we only know what, what the price is going to be from Eversource a short time out. But what this did was give us 41 months of, so an initial six months and then 36 months of a, of a locked in price, which is still lower than it normally is. Um, but, it, and it also brings us energy efficient green energy. So, um, so to, to kind of take the mystifying out of this, so we have two charges, we have the first price is, is your basic and it's, it's an automatic, you are signed up automatically. It's autom if you're a Deerfield basic user of electricity, you're not getting anything special from anybody. You're enrolled automatically in this. Your bill doesn't change. Um, only the price changes. It's a little less at the moment and um, you don't have to do anything. If you still feel like you want to stay with Eversource and you like paying whatever they are and what the mix is, you can opt out at any time. No cost you can opt right out of it. Um, however, um, everybody's automatically enrolled and you'll see that uh, shortly in your bill. There'll be notices going out to you. Um, very strict information has to go out a specific way based on the um, DPU, so um, Department of Utilities. So the second option that people have is if they feel climate change is um, a serious threat to the environment or for some reason they want to pick very more green energy than what we're supplying in the in the current basic amount they can choose to have 50% of their energy brought to their house being green energy mass green energy or new england green energy so it costs a little bit more for that but that you know people may want to make a choice that i'd pay a little bit more for um, saving the environment, you know, doing my part locally to, to create green energy jobs locally. So those are, the, those are the two choices. The first one we chose was 5% Massachusetts, it's called, is it Mass Rex? It's, it's Massachusetts or New England based green energy. So 5% of it will be um, green energy. There's also an underlying percentage that's automatically green energy just because that's based on what Massachusetts requires energy companies to produce. So that we're doing an additional 5% green energy automatic in your bill right off the bat. You can choose to opt into a 50% um, local green energy. So if you want to do that, oh, happy to do that. Would love to see people do that and make a difference um, in climate change and produce local green jobs. So. That's really it in a nutshell. That's going to start pretty quick. You're going to see information come out in, the, in your mailbox very soon. There'll be a letter. Um, we're going to have it up on our website. I'll post it online. We'll do all kinds of ways to get information out to you. Our energy committee is going to meet and talk about this and find ways to educate the public on what we're doing and why we're doing it. You know, we just signed a, 
um, a green infrastructure policy for the town because we, we really care about green um, resi climate resiliency. Um, so, you know, we took a step in that direction. This is just adding to that. This is another step that Greenfield, uh, that Deerfield's taking to do more, um, more things um, responsibly for our environment. We feel it's a win-win because of the cost. Uh, the stability and price you can guarantee for 36 for 41 months um, and and we just think it's the right thing to do but again people can always make a choice and opt out so I don't want to talk more because I'll tend to confuse it even further but if anyone has any questions they can reach out to me there'll be a lot of there's phone numbers you can call for questions we'll get all this information out to you but it's thank you pretty pretty straightforward um, you're gonna have a cheaper bill more green energy to start off and um, we think stable pricing for for a good 41 months and um, and you can choose to do more if you want to do more for your environment you know your choice yeah your choice all of it's your choice you can always go back to Eversource and get the supply from them whatever you want to do but we want to give that choice to people and start making a difference towards the um, towards the environment and and uh, green energy so and and support local green energy jobs here around Massachusetts and New England. So I'll stop there. That's, mm -hmm. that's energy. Any questions, please let me know. Thank you. Yep. Um, the next item is the classification <coughs> compensation study. So um, Casey was really great to get a grant to do this. We've been needing to do this anyways. Every so often we look at how much we pay our employees. Um, is it fair to other, compared to other towns? Um, what's their job description? Has their job changed in the last se several years? Um, I think the last time this was done was 07 or even before. Um, <coughs> when I, or excuse me. excuse me, maybe 2007, nine or 2017 or, I'm trying to think when I first came on, they were just finishing up about four years ago. Yeah. They were just finishing up a study. Yeah. I think I went back to the records, Trevor, yep. and I can find Mostly it's compens it's related to compensation, but I've noticed that I'm sure they did some work on the job descriptions, but since yeah. I got here, I've also noticed that things have changed substantially. So this yes. is a good opportunity for the town to recognize that Absolutely. we need to catch up with the changes that may yep. have happened in people's tasks yeah. and responsibilities. Yeah. Oh, even just in the last three months, things have changed. I don't have any problem authorizing Casey to sign the contract because, um, you know, she hustled the grant. Mm -hmm. She knows that we want everything looked at. So. Yep. I had a couple. I just have to meet with Mary and discuss. There was a question that I want to make sure that I share with her because it was a question that Skip Olmstead brought up that I really, I think it needs to be at least addressed if, if she thinks it could work. And that's dealing with some, at least referencing part-time people, if nothing else, with specific job descriptions. Um, the personnel bylaw doesn't require them to be in the compensation plan. But if we at least could address some of the job description elements, that could help us later on. And I had, a, I had just a question on that. I had two questions on that comp study. And I just sure. wanted to grab that real quick, if I could. I just want to make sure that the job descriptions are accurate for what we, how we are doing business now. I mean, some of the stuff, right. we, we have definitely changed business, but I also think what we're doing might not change back either, you know, for the foreseeable future. So. Okay. And I think you're right. I think we have to identify that there's been a huge change in our operational service delivery because of COVID. And I really, my colleagues and I in, in STAM and the municipal HR group, we don't think this is going to backslide too much. We think there's going to be more of a question about whether we should go back to face-to-face -to -face, in terms of face-to-face -face meetings and stuff. But really, it's going to become an ongoing training and implementation thing of doing remote connectivity. I agree. So... Um so just under mm. task one, they just repeated with the project twice in that first sentence. So they could just delete yeah. with the project once. You probably saw that. Um, the other thing was how long, do we have a time frame on how long this, this compensation <coughs> study will go? 
Usually we have like right. you know be, to be done by a specific date, and I just didn't. The know. grant the grant has to be done relatively soon, isn't it, Casey? No, actually we have a little bit of time, but Good. for my purposes and after discussion with personnel board, I that's actually one of my main questions for Mary, and I sent her yeah. an email and asked her and I mean, that you know I need to deal with this whole question. About I, I thought we only had description, but also a time frame because we need to get this done relatively quickly. Well, We've got people. So if you recall, the personnel board um, tabled a request to make a change for the building commissioner because they wanted us to do a classification compensation study. So I've moved it along to this point, but we really we've need to facilitate that, so. it happening done. expeditiously because we've got people waiting for answers. Well, and I don't think it's fair if they wait longer than maybe some of the changes that have happened before I got here. I know yeah. there were a couple changes and a couple job descriptions and responsibilities in the last year or so. So I don't think you should penalize somebody because yeah, or an employee when they're, they've seen a pattern of, of approvals that have happened. So yes, so, the compensation classification study is important, but we also need to be mindful of the fact that the employee's perception of, of where they are in this whole um, this whole schedule is important as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the building inspector, we did that with the last personnel board. But anyways, um, I was so, and I was thinking we, if we had this before we started, uh, you know, I want enough time so it's not rushed because I want it, right. it's really important to have. But as long as we had it for, you know, um, starting the budget discussions of next year, meaning like early October, September, something like that. I thought the money had to be spent by de the end of December, Casey. No, it doesn't. This actually goes until June. Oh, really? That's great. Oh, but, well, that, but, if, but I really... We I have mean, time, but I want to make sure that we're equitable with yeah, everybody. It, but, agreed. It's important enough to do well and take your time at, but if, right. if we could have it by the time we start doing next year's budget would be great. I, I was just going to say it's really important to have for input for next year, and I think especially next exactly. year if we're going to have to look at, you know, reducing our budgets. And I'm okay with you signing as well, but I was just thinking, wh where will the select board have input on, will they propose, um, so will there be a meeting at some point where they, where the, where the person sits down with our select board and we kind of talk out what they have found, what we have for opinions? And yeah, okay. actually they do. So what they do is they put together a report. Yep. Once they've reviewed the job descriptions and they take input, both written and sometimes verbal input from employees yep. about what they see as changes in their job description based on how they were hired or how things have happened in the last couple years. Yep. Then they develop a newer job description and present that for review. Okay. Um, there, so there's, there are various points where there's intersects for comment. Okay, good. And at some point, the classification, once, once that classification of the positions is more nailed down, then yep. they go out and they do the compensation um, comparison. Okay. And so one thing I would recommend is that we consider, and this is part of that conversation with Mary Accardi um, from the Collins Center, is that we make sure that we cover our bases in a wide, a, a wide mm -hmm. compensation comparison. So yeah. not just limit it to Franklin County Correct. or Hampshire Correct. County. Absolutely. Widen it out because, you know, I've noticed in Franklin County, and it's changed specifically in the last several years, is Franklin County is just starting to catch up with some of the other adjacent counties in mm -hmm. terms of pay rates for municipal employees. And so it tends to still be a little depressed. Yeah. And I want to make sure that we give people a more rounded evaluation. Yeah. And they would come back to you with that information as well. Okay. okay. So there's at least one to two presentations you would, you would want to participate great. in. Okay, that's all I have. So do you need a motion on that or, you, or a, a vote? Um, it, just to make sure that I can sign the contract. I just want to make okay. sure that everybody's, so I make you're a, all, all okay with that. Yeah, I made a motion to... Uh, uh, give Casey the authority to sign the contract with um, uh, the Collins Center. I'll second that motion. And I'll send that change out to you guys too so you see what we've defined. Okay. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? 
Dave Wolfram, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nessa, aye. Great. So then you had uh, you had a piece of mail here. Somebody was looking for space for a um, census training. Census training. Where yes, we? and I talked to Richard about it. I don't know that because they've got kind of some specific requirements that yeah. I don't even think the main meeting room could meet. Yeah. Never mind the fact that we okay. are closed. Right. And I'm very sensitive to the fact that well, we need to fill the census out because there's a person in my household that has not. Uh oh. Yeah, no, and it's, it's not very me. important. <laughs> very, very important. Yeah, so now, I would love to give a speech. It's very I just important. Don't know where. So I was trying to get creative, and I talked to Richard about it, and he really doesn't think we can meet their needs. So we're hoping that somebody else can in the county, yeah. well, because we don't have a very large space. There's other towns that have bigger what spaces. About the Burkhog? Would they have a space? Yeah. Does it, can can you suggest the Furcog? Yeah. The only problem I is I'm, I'm looking, they're looking for the 4th through the 8th. And, right. you know, we, we can clean on the two, I think, it, what is it, Tuesday and Thursday they clean? So you could clean Thurs Monday Tuesday. And Thursday. But the problem, but is, the problem is there's no. Our employees are here. So yeah, so we'd have to I know, have. and that's the problem. Place. That's really the issue is we would have to be gone. And so this was my reasoning for not saying, I wanted to bring it to you so you realize that. Yeah. The, you know, the questions come out and Dick and I are discussing it. But honestly, I don't think we could meet those needs right. and still meet the needs of the town. Right. So my inclination is to say no to them. But I wanted you guys right. to, no, to I, think about yeah, maybe why this is important. And another and maybe there's another option out there and the public would be willing to has a space that would let people use. Well, you're going to need a fairly large space to keep them socially distanced. Right. Yeah. Right. I, They've got to be. Well, they said spread. they you could. I mean, I they're 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 talking they're, about, they're talking six, about to six oh. six to eight people. Yeah, you could six to eight people, but they need loca a new location that can give them power. So they're doing training, so they need computer power and stuff, and yeah. and Wi-Fi, and so that makes it harder for us yeah. to try to do it outside because we don't have that capability. Right, right, and okay. and, and so uh, the bathrooms. I mean, you could segregate out two bathrooms for their use. And well, we two, can't have that many people in this building. Yeah, but but then, but then, right. but but then we put our, uh, yeah. Well, then we put our, oh, then we we'd, we'd have to right. we'd have to shut down yeah. our offices. No, that's right, because that's and I don't want to do that. No, nope. that's no. that's what it boils down to. Right. I think it's important, but I don't have, in our estimation, Dick and I both think that that's not. No, no. Um, when you do the, the math, best way to handle it. Right. When you do the math, there's too many people in here. Yeah. Yeah. Even even only six people. Yeah, that. even with only six people. So regretfully, I would say we can't we right. can't help them. Right. Um, but I'll think. And about I can if see if Jessica else. knows of any place. Jessica yeah. Atwood actually right. sent another email about this that I forwarded out to you guys. But I'll see if Jessica can help out. Okay. I yeah. just I don't think we have the space allowance so that we can meet the needs of the town residents, but also provide extra area. Yeah. Casey, I'd really appreciate it because the census is really important. Would you just? Oh, I know. Could you make a few? <laughs> Could you make a few phone calls to help out this woman? Um, yeah. she, I will ask that question. Yeah. Okay. One of the options you have is you could probably talk to Darius and see if they could put him up in the library. Yeah, maybe there's something okay. cool. Oh, I hadn't even yeah. thought about that. That's an idea. Because but they're going to have everything they need there. Let me forward it to Darius and yeah, see if he can he help. Yeah, has a space. Okay. Yeah, because we'd have to shut down the school. I mean, shut down the town office. And I... I that's a good that's thought, a Dave. whole week yeah there might be something there you know i mean that's four days of the week right yep that we our employees couldn't come in yeah. so under uh anticipated items unanticipated we have the um wastewater treatment borrowing documents so barb was here last week and said she was going to go out to bid we got right. quite a few bids and we got um a great rate point four not point nine four Yes, that's 1%. an incredible rate. Not even one percent. Oh my God, that's amazing. And that's for one point yes. seven. So congratulations to yes. Barbara and the team that she's working with. Absolutely. Um, with our, uh, I can't remember the name of the company it's right now, but congratulations to them for, for, for such a really solid impact, bid response. That's going to really impact the project. Yeah, it'd be great. I mean, oh, it's really wonderful. great. So this is for, through uh, Uni Unibank for savings, and this is the purchaser's Newberry Port five cents savings bank um, for interest rate of 0.94 percent the principal is yeah. uh, one million seven hundred fifty two thousand the interest will be sixteen thousand four 
$1,768,080 for a total of $1,768,468.50. And I would make a motion to approve that. And so this includes that. two things. This is $900,000 for the clarifier and $852,000, which is the first borrowing for the larger yep. wastewater treatment plant project. Yep. So there's signatures for all of us. So I make a motion to um, sign the uh, municipal, uh, the anticipation serial loan. Um, and I'll second that. Any further discussion? I only just want to thank Barbara. Yeah, that's that was an, huge. That's amazing great. savings for us. Really Excellent. Great. Yep. Unibank and Barbara did such a great job. Yep. Mm. All those in favor? Dave Wolfram, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nessa, aye. All righty. So we have a, a bunch to sign here, so I'll just go through and do this. While you guys are signing, can I put forward a couple comments? Sure. Um, town administrator updates. Um, so we talked about Harry Ruddock uh, retirement notification last week. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, we're working on the letter now, would the board approve the letter as drafted by the town administrator and sign it at their convenience once we complete it? Yes. Yes, that's fine. OK. And then we have the closing documents for the Prevere property in progress. Um, we had some information we had to forward to town council. So we'll, once we get to that point, you guys have already taken the vote to have the chair sign. So after tonight's meeting, that'll be Carolyn. Um, and then if we have other things that I need to bring up, I will, related to that, I'll let you know. Okay. So, so can I, I just want to ask one thing about next, the 20, the meeting on the 23rd. Here's the three things I think after listening through the meeting with you. So the FY 2021 appointment. Yeah. Did you want me to throw the code of conduct sure. on there for you guys to approve? Or do you want yes. to allow me to promulgate it myself based on town council's comments? Well, just, I would love to see it when you're done. I mean, if you don't have it done for I think you can, fine. well, she can circulate it to yeah. us. And let, I would yeah. rather have it circulated to us, Casey, um, so we can give input to you, okay? Okay. And then we can have a final product. Yeah. I don't want to wait okay. till I don't want to wait till next week to have right. it. No, I yeah, want do, us do to work thing. on whenever, it now. Whenever you can pass it off yeah. to us, that'd be great. Okay, so yeah. the reason I was asking is so that we don't violate the open meeting law because you can't deliberate an email. Correct. Correct. Um, that was the reason I asked whether you would no, allow just, me to promulgate it. Yes. I certainly will send you the copies, and no, I just hadn't fine. done it because I was waiting for her comments. Right. No, um, we'll, we'll just give you the this, feedback. This prevents that from happening, similar to how we handled the temporary outdoor dining yes. situation. Yep, that's fine. Um, so we're going to meet the 23rd, July 1st, July 15th, and the 29th, then. Is that correct? That's how I put it up, because you had mentioned the 23rd, so I just wrote it in. Okay, so does this, does this jive with Dave's schedule? Does this work with your schedule? The first and the fourth. Uh, the, the first. The 15th, he'll be out. The first, I'll be out. He'll of be town. out for a couple weeks. First, I'll be out of town on the first. On the first. Okay, and so... If you follow that through, the then we're meeting August 12th and August 26th, right? Yep. Okay. I just want to make sure. And then, so let's just That's go. That's how I've got it on the schedule. Let okay, let's just go to second. September. One sec, let me look at that again. So we have um, the 23rd we're meeting, then, then the 1st, then the. Does that work with your school committee, yep. Trevor? Yep, it does, 15th. And okay. then the 29th. And then yeah. August 12th. 9th and the 23rd in September. Yep. Okay, so then we're going into September. 
Um, let me just look. So that's the ninth. Um, is that uh, problematic for anyone? And the 23rd. Yeah. Okay. We can, once we get into September, we can, you know, I always have angst around the holidays. <laughs> Might not be such a big deal this year if we don't have a vaccine, but usually have lots of family. So right now what I have down after this, uh, after the, the four of us are chatting about it, um, do you want me to change the July 1st meeting to a June 30th? No, I don't think okay. so. Okay, I just want to make sure. And then August oh, no, 12th, the Dave, 26th, Dave, September 9th, and the 23rd, 3rd, and we'll I'm revisit it as we get closer. I, I just don't want to meet, I don't want to meet if Dave can't make it. That's I'm all. out of town the 26th to the 10th on vacation. Oh, well, that's different. I just meant, I didn't want to schedule it when you're, you know. I'm, I'm scheduled work. for surgery on the 14th of July. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, he's going to be out for a, f a couple of weeks. No, that's fine. I, I just, I didn't want to try to schedule things um, without all three of us being here. I could come in on drugs, but I'm not very well behaved on drugs. No, that's fine. No, relax and get better. Mm. I know. Um, the only, the only day I don't want to meet is November 25th, you know, the night before Thanksgiving and so I don't know how, we haven't gone that far out, but I'm just giving you a heads I up. I can actually figure it out. Hold on a second. I'm just so, just giving you a heads up. I don't want to do that. What do you have for? Um, I don't want to meet um, November 25th, which is night right. before Thanksgiving. That's way too far out. I know, well. <laughs> so, I think if I follow the schedule, and I can check this, I think if I follow the schedule past September, you would be meeting on the 7th of October and the 21st of October, Wait. then the 4th of November and the 18th of November. Well, that works out fine. And then, um, then what do we, then, then December works out too, because I don't want to meet the 23rd. Yeah. So that works out for December too. So, okay, we're all set. Yeah, I'm good too, I think on all these. The only thing is, when we get out to later in the year. No, that's fine, Trevor. I, I, my only, I just don't want to meet before Thanksgiving and before Christmas. Most of these are Tuesdays, so I don't think I'll run into any issues except for February and March. I could be only Wednesdays, but okay. Perfect. Um, so we have, um, if that's everything there, we have an executive session. I'll just What's read this. this? Grow space. Let me, I'll read that here. So. Uh, executive session, the, the chair declares a quorum of its members in, is, is in attendance at this meeting and an open meeting could be detrimental to the negotiating position of the public body for the following actions. A member of the select board moves uh, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, 6, the select board may enter into executive session to discuss the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of property if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the board and the chair so declares, I do. And uh, we will um, not be returning to um, public session. We'll adjourn at the end of the executive session. Before I make this motion um, and call, I just wanna see if there's any public comment because um, if we're gonna adjourn at the end of the executive session, I wanna make sure if anybody has any comment on the line Anybody out there want to say hello or have any comments for the board? I'll give it a couple of seconds. As people unmute, star six, you would unmute yourself if you want to speak. Hearing none, um, we, will, um, we will adjourn at the end of the executive session. So we'll do a roll call vote and um, can I have a second on this? Oh, second, Carolyn. Did you make the motion and second it? Yes, we just did. And then um, I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfram. I, Carolyn Ness. Okay, thank you all very Trevor, much. Trevor, who seconded the motion? Oh, Me. Carolyn. I did. Carolyn. Carolyn, Carolyn did, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure.